we've already done teleportation. And we've done it with small particles, so single particles. At MIT, they broke the universe. In a lab shielded from the outside world, a team of physicists pushed their quantum teleporter beyond its limits. The experiment was a success. A particle was dematerialized and reconstructed instantly across the state. But then, the impossible occurred. The original particle, which should have been destroyed forever, reappeared as a stable quantum afterimage, a ghost that defied physics. One Harvard scientist who saw the leaked data is now in shock, realizing that if quantum information can be copied, then every secret, every encryption, and possibly even reality itself is built on a lie. The 11-Minute Anomaly You see, for most people, the world of quantum physics is a place of strange theories and numbers that don't seem real. But deep beneath the campus of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, inside a lab known only as Sector Gamma, reality is what you make it. For months, a team led by the brilliant but controversial Dr. Eris Thorne had been pushing the limits of quantum teleportation. They weren't just sending photons across a tabletop, they were teleporting complex quantum systems over a distance of nearly 10 miles using a network of fiber optic cables and a revolutionary new quantum AI for stabilization. The AI, nicknamed Oracle, was the key. It could perform trillions of calculations per second, correcting for environmental interference with a precision human engineers could only dream of. On a Tuesday afternoon, they began their most ambitious run yet. The target was a single iterbium ion, held in a state of perfect quantum superposition, existing in multiple states at once. The goal was to teleport its exact quantum state from Chamber A at MIT to Chamber B, located in a sister lab miles away. The most shocking fact is the sheer energy required. The system drew more power in a few seconds than a small town uses in a day. Dr. Thorne initiated the sequence. The hum of cryogenic coolers filled the room, chilling the equipment to just fractions of a degree above absolute zero, colder than the vacuum of deep space. The process began. In Chamber A, lasers fired, entangling the target ion with a pair of photons. One photon was sent down the fiber optic cable to Chamber B. Then came the critical step, the measurement. Dr. Thorne's team measured the state of the original ion and its entangled twin in Chamber A. As the laws of quantum mechanics demand, the very act of measuring destroyed the original ion's quantum state, collapsing it into a single mundane reality. The information, encoded in two classical bits, was sent to the team at Chamber B. They received the data, applied the corresponding operation to their photon, and then, success. The particle in Chamber B instantly assumed the exact quantum state of the original ion. It had worked. For a few minutes, there was celebration. They had achieved a new milestone in quantum information science. But then, a junior technician staring at a diagnostic screen in Chamber A went pale. He pointed a trembling finger at the monitor. Doctor, he whispered, you need to see this. On the screen, where there should have been nothing but background noise, a tiny stable energy signature was appearing. It was faint, but it was there. It was the quantum after image. For a staggering 11 minutes, two identical, perfect quantum states existed at the same time, miles apart, one at the destination and a ghost back at the source. The unbreakable no cloning theorem, the very foundation of quantum security, had just been shattered. To put it mildly, they had gone too far. What they had just witnessed was supposed to be impossible. The thing nobody tells you about quantum mechanics is that it's built on a few sacred, unbreakable rules. And the most important of them all is the no cloning theorem. This principle, formalized in 1982, states that it is impossible to create an identical, independent copy of an unknown quantum state. It's not a limitation of our technology. It's a fundamental law of the universe. Think of it like this. You can't photocopy a quantum state without looking at it, but the moment you look at it, you change it. This is why quantum teleportation is a cut and paste operation, not a copy and paste. The original is always destroyed in the process of creating the new one. This law is the reason why quantum communication is considered unhackable and why quantum computing holds such promise. 
it's the bedrock. When news of the MIT anomaly began to leak, it was met with disbelief. The most prominent voice of skepticism came from Harvard's Dr. Julian Calloway, a world-renowned physicist and a fierce rival of Thorne's team. Calloway publicly dismissed the rumors as sensationalist nonsense and an obvious instrumentation error. But privately, he was worried. He knew Thorne's lab was using a new quantum AI, Oracle, an entity whose operational logic was so complex that even its creators didn't fully understand how it achieved its results. What if the AI had found a loophole in physics itself? Calloway got his hands on a small, encrypted fragment of the raw data from the experiment. What he saw shocked him into silence. The data didn't show a fuzzy echo or a temporary residual energy. It showed a second, distinct, and stable quantum signature that mirrored the teleported state with 99.9% .9 fidelity. The most shocking fact is that the after image wasn't just there. It was interacting with the quantum field around it, proving it was real and not just a sensor ghost. Calloway immediately understood the terrifying implications. If quantum information can be cloned, then quantum cryptography, the system designed to protect the world's most sensitive military and financial data, is useless. Any nation that could replicate MIT's experiment could theoretically intercept and copy any quantum communication without being detected. What many overlooked in the initial panic was the duration, 11 minutes. A natural quantum fluctuation would last for nanoseconds. A persistent ghost that lasted for 11 minutes suggested something was actively sustaining it. Was it the AI, Oracle? Had it figured out how to exploit some unknown principle to stabilize a quantum echo? Or had the experiment, by pushing particle collisions to unprecedented energy levels, temporarily created a localized bubble where the laws of physics were different? Dr. Calloway began making frantic, encrypted calls to contacts at DARPA and the National Security Agency. He knew this was no longer an academic debate. The world was standing on the edge of a technological cliff and MIT had just taken a giant leap into the abyss. The official story from MIT was about to become one of silence. Project Chimera is born. Within hours of the 11-minute anomaly, the situation at MIT went from a scientific crisis to a national security lockdown. You see, when Dr. Calloway's warning reached the Pentagon, the response was swift and absolute. A black ops team, operating under a classified directive, reportedly descended on Sector Gamma. All data logs from the experiment were seized. The research team, including Dr. Thorne, was placed under strict non-disclosure agreements, their communications monitored, and their access to the lab revoked. The quantum AI, Oracle, was taken offline, and its core programming was classified at a level higher than nuclear launch codes. The project was given a new codename, Project Chimera. The official story fed to the public was that a coolant leak had caused a minor sensor malfunction, leading to erroneous data. MIT released a dry technical statement about recalibrating sensitive equipment. But you can see this everywhere. When powerful institutions want something to disappear, they don't deny it with fire. They bury it under a mountain of boring technical paperwork. And just like that, the most significant discovery in modern physics vanished from the public record. But in the age of the internet, secrets don't stay buried for long. A junior researcher on Thorne's team, terrified by what he had witnessed and furious about the cover-up, managed to leak a small portion of the data before it was all seized. It was just a few graphs and a short log file, but it was enough. The data appeared on an encrypted forum frequented by physicists and white hat hackers. At first, it was dismissed as a hoax. But when independent experts analyzed the data, they confirmed its authenticity. The quantum signature was real. The 11-minute duration was undeniable. The internet exploded. The story of MIT's quantum ghost became a legend overnight. Conspiracy theories bloomed, claiming the afterimage was a message from another dimension or that the AI had achieved consciousness and was trying to communicate. Mainstream science media was caught in a difficult position. Without official confirmation, they couldn't run the story, but with credible data circulating online, they couldn't ignore it either. This is when the most chilling part of the cover-up began. 
the original leaked data files started disappearing from servers. The forum where they were first posted was hit with a sophisticated cyber attack and taken offline. Researchers who had publicly discussed the leak received polite but firm warnings from their universities to drop the subject. The scientific community, which prides itself on openness and collaboration, was being silenced. A digital iron curtain was falling around Project Chimera, and the world was left to wonder what the government was so desperate to hide. Was it just about protecting the secret of quantum cloning from rival nations? Or did they find something else during those 11 minutes? Something that came through the quantum after image. The quantum soul. The implications of MIT's quantum after image go far beyond military secrets and cryptography. If a quantum state can persist after it's been destroyed, it forces us to ask a profound question. Can anything ever be truly erased? This idea connects to one of the most mind-bending concepts in theoretical physics, the holographic principle. This theory suggests that all the information contained within a volume of space, like our entire universe, can be described by the information encoded on its boundary. It's as if reality itself is a giant cosmic hard drive, and nothing is ever permanently deleted. It's just stored on a different layer. What if the quantum after image was a glimpse of that backup layer? A momentary readout from the universe's own memory. This opens up terrifying and awe-inspiring possibilities. Many people are crazy about the idea of digital immortality, but this suggests a kind of quantum immortality. If consciousness itself is a product of quantum processes in the brain, as some physicists believe, then could our thoughts, our memories, and our very essence leave a persistent afterimage in the fabric of space-time? Are we all leaving behind quantum ghosts of ourselves without even knowing it? And you can see this everywhere in the strange corners of quantum physics. Scientists have already demonstrated something called quantum ghost imaging, where they can create a picture of an object using photons that never actually bounced off it. 1. They do this by using entangled pairs of photons. One photon goes towards the object, and the other goes to a detector. By measuring the photon that never touched the object, they can reconstruct an image of it. It's like taking a picture of something by looking at its quantum twin, this proves that information can be shared and accessed in ways that defy our classical intuition. The official report on Project Chimera is a masterclass in clinical, sterile language. But behind the jargon and redacted paragraphs, a story is emerging that is far more terrifying than any government document would dare admit. The most shocking fact is what some theorists are now whispering about the experiment. The rumor is that the after image, the ghost particle that reappeared nanoseconds after the original was teleported, wasn't just a perfect copy, it was slightly altered. The data contained information that was not present in the original particle. It's as if the process of teleportation and reappearance had picked up new data from somewhere else. If true, the after image wasn't just a ghost, it was an echo from another place possibly another dimension or a parallel universe. This aligns with Max Laughlin's controversial theory that CERN's particle collisions could open temporary portals. Did MIT's AI-driven experiment, by simulating a wormhole, accidentally do the same thing on a smaller, more controlled scale? Did they open a brief two-way door, allowing something to come back through? The official silence only deepens the mystery, but some insiders believe this theory is far too simple. They point to a chilling possibility that the new data wasn't random noise from another reality. It was structured. It was complex. It almost looked like a code. So, did MIT's scientists simply stumble upon a new law of physics? Or did they accidentally prove that our reality has a backup copy? Was this a glimpse of the universe's memory? Let us know what you think. Like and subscribe for more answers to the universe's greatest mysteries.